Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are interfering in U.S. elections yet again. And this time they're doing it, and I would argue, a more despicable way by essentially telling people, oh, no, 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 we're, we're politically neutral. Well, very obviously working with an organization that leans left in this country right now in the United States. Politics tends to be very divided between the left and the Democrats and the right and the Republicans. And because of that, things can kind of get blown up. But the serious issue here is that we have a foreign royal with a royal title, his wife who also proclaims and walks around and has everybody call her by her royal title. Even in a recent court filing against her sister, she made it very clear she was frustrated her sister wasn't using her royal title. And they are interfering and really trying to drive particular voters in a U.S. election. I find this deplorable. No matter which party they are a part of or endorsing or what have you, Harry and Meghan should have no business discussing U.S. elections at all as long as they still have a foreign title they are holding. If they want to just be Harry Windsor and Meghan Markle, they can say whatever they want. They can endorse whoever they want. But the couple likes to play this hypocritical game where they are trying to toe the line as close as they can to getting involved in politics, because I think Megan is very politically active, or at least wants to be, but not going so far as to endorse a certain candidate or party unless you sort of read between the lines, because they don't want the cries for their royal titles to be stripped to grow louder. And I think this game is dangerous, and I think this game needs to end. At this point, they should just exercise their right to vote. If Harry has it, I don't know if he does, but Megan certainly does. If she wants to vote, vote quietly and don't really bring anybody in because you don't need to. But of course, that's not how Harry and Megan run. And they have to share with the world on their Archwell website what they are seemingly forcing their staff members to do. So we are going to go into this today because, again, this is an important topic because Royals can live anywhere. We've had several royals live in this country. Some even do have citizenship in this country. But none of them are really engaging in politics in this country. And I think that's a very important distinction that needs to be discussed. So we are going to go into this. But if you guys haven't been to Royal News Network before, hello, my name is Brittany, and I provide compelling royal commentary. So if you guys are interested in subscribing, feel free to hit the button down below. We would love to have you back. I am also so excited that the Crown Report went off beautifully on Tuesday. So it's kind of going over a lot of the other royal news that I just can't get to in the week in a live format. And what I will be doing, what you guys will be seeing too, is I'll be cutting up some of those sections where we're talking about particular topics. So that is the some of the media negative reaction to Catherine's cancer update video. We have Marius in Norway. He is the son of the crown princess. He is still getting into legal trouble and very, very serious legal trouble, by the way. He's been charged with assault, violating a restraining order, making threats, like so many things. So we go into that. We talk about how, no, the palace did not cut Meghan Markle out of Harry's birthday picture. She was never there in the first place in the picture they chose. So I discussed that a bit. And then we also talked about Prince Dog's days. Those were kind of our main stories. So I'll be breaking those up and putting those up online for anybody who might be interested. So if you see those, that is what they are. But of course, you can watch the entire episode. It is in the link up above here. And so I'd love to have you check it out. So back to this story and what Archwell Foundation posted on their website and why I think this is in particular so dangerous and how they should really, really stop with the political pandering. If they want to be involved in politics, that's fine. Drop the titles. But I want to emphasize again, the critical thing Harry and Meghan are doing all the time and haven't let up on so far, which is towing the line between trying to be royal and also trying to be, you could say, American. So they, they seem to want people to treat them as if they're royalty. They want to have sort of this, this role that royals do in the United States here. I mean, they kind of sometimes create these pseudo royal engagements for themselves. I'm like, but you're not royal here. That doesn't exist. And then at the same time, they also want to be seen as celebrities. They want to do the celebrity things and, and all this sorts of nonsense. And so they, they can't seem to pick a lane. And this is important because you need to pick a lane. You either are going to be American or you're going to be royalty. You can't be both. You can be a royal who lives here, but you can't be royalty here.
That's the distinct difference. And that's not what Harry and Meghan are doing. And they're, everything they do, they seem to advocate for on a broad international or national scale. So when Princess Madeline was here living in the United States, her husband has an American citizenship. I'm sure he voted in elections. Do I have any idea what he voted for? No. And that's the way he should be. Although he doesn't have a title, he is connected, obviously, to a foreign power, in this case, Sweden. And so he should, and he does, exercise neutrality and just doesn't say anything. And he's not really a public guy anyway, so I totally get it. But I appreciate that. And so you also have the crown prince and princess of Greece. And she was born in London, the crown princess, but she also had a lot of connections to New York. And so I think she is a U.S. citizen. Four of her five children have been born on U.S. soil, so they all hold U.S. citizenship. They can all vote. Are they politically active? No. Maybe they make a comment here or there. Sure. They don't represent a, a government or anything because at this point, Greece is defunct as a monarchy, but they keep their political inclinations to the side of it. Now, I will say, interestingly enough, Beatrice Borromeo, who is an Italian aristocrat married into the Monaco royal family, she was actually posting some reactions, although they were fairly vague, but you could maybe see where she stood on the debate between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris, which I found very interesting because I was like, you definitely don't have American citizenship, so you really shouldn't be talking about what is going on in our elections. But, but Harry and Meghan, again, are trying to go down this path where they're, they're kind of inching towards one party, you know where they stand, but then they're also claiming neutrality. I don't like that hypocrisy. I see celebrities do it every election cycle in the United States. They always proclaim they want people to vote. It's so important to vote. And then they don't like it when people don't vote their way. And the person they don't like gets voted into office. And it's like, so did you really want people to vote or did you only want people to vote a certain way? Those are two different things. Because again, I feel like this happens within the celebrity realm a lot. And Harry and Meghan are going down the same direction where they're proclaiming they want neutrality. And yet at the same time, they don't really. So I did find this video. This is from 2016 about voting. So they will tell you how important it is to vote, but then also subtly endorsing a particular candidate. And the only way we can prove that to you is by having lots of famous people. Lots of famous people. Lots and lots of famous people. Repeating how important. 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 How important. Important it is. Register. 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 Vote. So many famous people. So I just I remember this this clip coming in, and it's like they said, oh, vote, vote, vote. But they're not really excited when you don't vote for the particular person that they want. And actually, there was a funny bit there where they said if the candidate wins, in that case, it was Hillary Clinton, then Mark Ruffalo would do a nude scene. So I don't know if he's happy or not that that did happen. I don't think he's particularly happy. Well, we know he's not happy. He was very, very clear about that. But Terry and Megan are wading into this and they claim via multiple news outlets, even the Telegraph was reporting, oh, we got to hear. Harry and Meghan remain neutral in the upcoming election. And so, according to The Telegraph, they will remain publicly neutral in the upcoming election. After the public spat with Donald Trump in 2020, The Telegraph understands. But that's not exactly true. And how do we know this? We know this because our 12 Foundation has recently done a sort of voter outreach effort. And although they claim they want to support all parties, when you actually look at the organization they are working with here, it's obviously left-leaning. So it's like, well, which is it? Are you politically neutral? Or are you left-leaning? Because you can't be both. You have to pick one or the other. So let's look at it. So here is the staff. And you got to wonder, too, if this is a way to address the whole area and Megan are terrors to their staff situation. And they don't look particularly happy. In this organization, they have people, it's called Vote Forward, they have people write personalized notes to encourage other people to vote. And so I have a question here because I noticed that there is a QR code. Now, if you don't know as well, a lot of voter registration organizations in the United States have a political agenda. They're not just registering people to vote out of the goodness of their hearts because it's really easy to register to vote. Like you can do it when you renew your driver's license or at least you can in my state. Like it's super duper easy. What they are in particular trying to do is influence people to vote a certain way. Either it's overt or it's subtle, but it's always there within these organizations. It's very rare that they're actually just totally and completely flat neutral, that they just want people to vote. No, they want people to vote because they want a particular candidate or agenda to win. That is what voter registration, or at least every time I hear voter registration organizations, I'm like, 
Oh, that's what you want. But my question is right here is what is this QR code saying? Because it could just lead them depending on if all of these people, they are mailing these letters to people in the same state. It could take them to the voter registration site or it could take them to a site Vote Forwards has created that talks about particular issues with their political bias intact. Again, that's a huge question. I also thought it was interesting that these first couple lines had been removed. I'm just so curious what these things say, because you got to wonder too, what are these people saying? And again, because of Harry and Meghan's royal title, this becomes very serious because they could be saying, hey, we work for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, two people holding British titles. You should vote the way they want you to because they want you to vote this way. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that's what they're saying. I hope these remain politically neutral, but the organization they're working with is not. And, and Megan has made her political leanings pretty clear over the years. And the other question I have that we haven't really been able to answer yet here is where are they sending these? Are these going to Californians, which is really a one party state at this point? It's, it's broadly Democrat or are they sending these to battleground states? Because if they're sending these to battleground states, meaning states that are sort of a toss up between the parties, again, you're looking at some potential real political interference here. Because not only are you an outside person sending a letter to a separate state where you really don't know anything that's going on with their politics, but you're trying to influence things. Again, that that I, I feel like that's just wildly inappropriate wildly, wildly inappropriate. Harry and Meghan raise all these questions by just posting this nonsense and not being clear. And again, I really do have such an issue with this. No person with a foreign title should be at all trying to influence voters in an American election. And so let's take a look at what this says, because what I always want to focus on is what people are not seeing immediately, how they're trying to sneak things through the lines so that if you're reading this, you think, oh, they're just wanting to help people vote. No, there's, there's a bit of a political agenda behind this. And despite their proclamations of neutrality, they're not being neutral. And that is hypocritical. It's hypocritical. It's election interference, all these sorts of things, or at least election interference in, in my mind, in the way that they're using foreign royal titles to enhance some political wins, perhaps in the United States. Now, I don't think they'll have much of an impact at all. But again, I, I want to be looking at this so people can catch on to what they're doing. So it says, in honor of National Voter Registration Day, the Archwell Foundation team came together for a meaningful volunteer activity to support and empower our communities. So which communities do you mean? Do you mean Democrat communities, Republican communities, all communities, regardless of political bias? That I don't know. But they tell us in the next line that they're actually looking to move things in a subtly different direction. Using Vote Forward's impactful letter writing tool, our team wrote personalized letters encouraging unregistered voters to take a crucial step, registering to vote. And again, that is a good thing. Megan legally can still vote. Not an issue with that. But Vote Forward has a specific political agenda. So you're saying you just want to help communities Sure, but you're also wanting to influence things in a particular way. And the best route forward to, for them is actually, I don't understand why they just don't, no, don't say anything. Do you know how to be politically neutral? Say nothing. That's how you're politically neutral. Say nothing. Then you're politically neutral. If you say something, then you become politically active. And that's what they're doing. Again, they're trying to play both sides. They're trying to walk this line because they don't want to lose their titles. But Megan also wants to influence politics. So this is what she's doing. Is she's telling you, oh, no, I just want everybody to register to vote. But at the same time, too, going, well, use Vote Forward's format, you know, because it's good. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. That kind of thing. It's just one of those things where I just find it so deceitful. Because it's not what you really mean. Same with celebrities. I hate celebrity endorsements or celebrities endorsing, hey, just go out and vote because that's not what they mean. In that whole video, all they tell people to do is vote subtly, making digs at a particular candidate. But at the end of the day, the, the candidate they didn't want won and they all get mad. So it's like, did you really want people to actually exercise their vote or did you only want them to exercise their vote if they voted a particular direction? And again, we see this here. So let's go back into the next bit. It says voting is not just a right. It's a fundamental way to influence the fate of our communities. Now, 
number one, voting is not a right. It's a privilege. Yes, it's a right written into the Constitution, but philosophically, it's actually technically more of a privilege because voting can be taken away from you. Governments can change. You can become a felon and not be able to vote. There are millions of reasons, and not everybody has the right to vote. The concept of having a right to something, like something like food, water, safety, all these sorts of things, medical care, is it was really a modern concept and it never really existed in life before. Yes, it should be where things have gone, but that is just not the reality of the situation. And I prefer to see voting as a privilege because it's a privilege that could be lost. So you should always exercise this privilege because what if you don't have it in the future? That's important. So, and it's a fundamental way to influence the fate of our communities. It is, it can be a big impact, both small and large. And so it goes on to say, at the Archwell Foundation, we recognize that civic engagement, no matter one's political party, is at the heart of a more just and equitable world. So again, this shows you as well, just in their writing of this, some of her political bias, which is left-leaning because equitable world is a misnomer. It's nonsensical. It doesn't make sense. You are not guaranteed equal outcome. If that was the case, every single person who started a YouTube channel would have the same number of subscribers I do or Mr. Beast does. You are not guaranteed the same outcome regardless of having the same opportunity. Anybody can create a YouTube channel, but not everyone is successful at it. That's just life. And so I always kind of hate that idea that everybody should just have this equal opportunity of outcome, which is what equitable means. I believe in equality, which means you, everyone should have the same opportunity. And so getting back to no matter one's political party, one's political party, do they really mean that? I would argue that they don't. They don't mean one's political party. They want people to vote a particular way. They want a certain candidate to win. That is what they want. And that is why they are aligning with vote forward. They're not aligning with it because it's the best voter registration organization. They're aligning with it because it conforms to their political bias. And so my personal philosophy on voter registration organizations is that number one, they probably shouldn't exist because if you're an adult and can't figure out how to vote, that's, that's on you. But Overall, it should be just, here is a list of the websites you need to go to in each state to register to vote. That's like literally what a voter registration organization should be. I don't know why it needs to be anything else. <laughs> don't know. Anyways, it goes on to say, by participating in initiatives like this, we aim to amplify the message that every voice matters, unless you're a Republican. That, that's the truth there. They really only want their side to win. And that's fine, but don't lie about it. Just say outright, which I know they won't, but because again, it could get them in hot water with their titles, but they're basically saying vote Democrat because their voices matter. Another, if another political party wins, then uh, how dare those voices matter? Like, again, there's a hypocrisy there. I just despise, I despise it every year when the Hollywood people do it. I despise it when Harry and Meghan are doing it too, because it's, it's not accurate to what they really think. So it says, we invite you to join us in this important effort to volunteer your time and write letters to potential voters. Sign up at Vote Forward's website. Now, they didn't have to do this because, again, what they're doing, saying and not saying, is, yeah, we want every voice to matter. But here, go to this partisan website that can help you impact potential partisan voters. Again, this is not what they're saying because... To be truthful, what they should say, for those who wish to take immediate action, you can register to vote today by visiting vote.gov. That is actually politically neutral and maybe all they should have said. For those who want to vote, register here. That's it. Vote.gov. That's it. That's all. That's all you need. Why go to this particular website? Because again, they're playing politics here. It says together, let's make sure every eligible voter, except for Republicans, is informed and empowered to participate in the shaping of America's future except for Republicans. Again, I don't want to get into party politics, but, because that's not what this channel is about, but it's important to make this distinction because I think not everybody is aware of that. Because what I always do is like, when you put a link there, I'm going to follow the link. Oh, and number one, if you're actually moving people off your website, you should always have the link open in a separate tab just so you can keep time on page and those sorts of things. So let's look. So if you look on here initially, you don't really get much in terms of what side of the political aisle they are on. You could guess maybe with the use of the color blue. There's a lot of blue here, little red. Now, if you don't know, in the United States, Democrats are blue, Republicans are red. 
So you have to go to the about us though, to actually really get where they are lying. So it says, we also support a 501c4 partisan campaigns to encourage likely Democratic voters to turn out in strategic states and districts. So again, what does it tell you? It says the majority of our letter writing campaigns are nonpartisan campaigns supporting our core 501c3 and 501c4 social welfare missions. Okay, those are two different things. So 501c3 is a charity, which Archwell is. Charities cannot endorse candidates. They have to be very careful when it comes to politics. They can sometimes endorse policies, but politics are sort of off limits. 501c4s are lobbying groups. So you can actually endorse a candidate. You can go pretty hard on policies. And so those are the distinct differences here. Now, so again, they claim to be nonpartisan, but yet also we support a 501c4, which is a lobbying group that encourages likely Democratic voters to turn out in strategic states and districts. So it's, it's sort of obvious, even though they're trying to, again, even this organization, trying to play both sides a bit, saying that they want to really encourage Democratic voters. And even here, when it says who we are, we are a 501c4. So they are a lobbying group. They are a completely another lobbying group. But then you go down here and you see the organizations they've worked with, which tells me pretty much the whole story. I looked at every single group here. This one even says College Democrats of America, National Democratic, what is this one? training committee we got here. We also have this D1 over here, which is organizing with Democrats. Democrats take action, basically, who we are. Democratic National Committee. <laughs> I figured that's what it was, but yeah, this is the Democrat National Committee. So they are literally working with the Democratic National Committee, this organization. Supermajority also is a Democratic-leaning organization people for way America, like all these are. So if all these people are working with them and this is the people they're broadcasting to, what this means is that they're left-leaning. So they are clearly driving partisan politics through this organization. And Harry and Meghan have signed on with it. Therefore, Harry and Meghan are also engaging in partisan politics and giving sort of a silent endorsement to their preferred party. And so them claiming that they're going to remain politically neutral is hypocritical and basically makes them liars yet again. They're not being politically neutral. They're actively engaging in politics and having their staff do the same and broadcasting it to everyone. Because here's the thing. They 100% as a staff can say, we want to do this and do it and not say a word. No one has to know. No one has to know. But Megan, again, wants to be seen as a political actor, but she also doesn't want to take the risk of losing her title by becoming too much of a political actor. Because again, the title is the only thing that makes some money because without it, you're still just have Rachel Zane from Suits and that wasn't all that impressive. So they have to use the titles. They need the titles. That's why they're getting these invitations to these countries where they're basically getting a glorified vacation because and they don't offer anything. I just think it's so ridiculous that other countries like invite them in for no reason. You don't get anything. You except for a couple of drum sets and some promises of some cash at some point. You, you don't really get anything out of this. But anyways, so Megan really wants to be engaging in this level. But again, she's too fearful. So she she's towing the line. And I just despise when the media just goes along with it. Oh, they're remaining politically neutral. I'm like, did you look at the organization they're working with? It's left-leaning. And again, I don't want them endorsing anyone. If they want to endorse, if they want to engage in politics, do it as Harry Windsor and Meghan Markle. You can't do it as the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. You can't do it from the office of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. That's literally how you get to the Archwell Foundation now is through their Sussex.com website. They are the office of Prince Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. That is who they are. And so for them, I feel like to be misleading to people, I think that's deplorable. And I think they need to just stop. Don't say anything. Do you know how you remain politically neutral? You say nothing. Don't say anything anything because they said something last time and they got a bit of heat for it and they're getting heat now even though other websites tried to go oh they're remaining politically neutral i'm like no they're not read further follow the link to vote forwards it doesn't take long to figure out where their loyalties lie and clearly harry and megan's as well and i don't understand again why they need to be encouraging people to vote 
what does it matter? You hold foreign royal titles. Just exercise your civic duty and be quiet about the rest. But no, they want to engage in politics. They want to. Megan desperately wants to be part of that political elite. She desperately wants to be advocating. I think she has participated in some sort of vote effort before. That's fine. But you've adopted a different life now. And again, she refuses to go along with it. You see this time and time again. They want to they want to be in both worlds. They want to be royalty and celebrity. She got to pick one. This kind of thing where you're going through both sides, it doesn't work. And again, I think Usher has the greatest response to all of this because he was on The View and he was recently asked, well, who are you voting for? And he was like, no, not playing that game. So let's listen to him. You know what? I don't get too deep into politics. I think voting is an individual choice. And find the candidate that you feel both are, are uh, who fits the category of where we want to be. Mm -hmm. So I like what he said here. He's remaining pretty neutral overall. You could guess maybe where he would vote, but you don't totally know because it should be an individual choice and you shouldn't be either forced to talk about it or if you really want to remain politically neutral, don't say anything at all. Just keep silent and let people vote if they want to, how they want to. You don't need to encourage people to register to vote. They probably registered to vote when they got their driver's license. So this whole push is a little silly. So we shall see if they do remain politically neutral or if they try to engage more in a very subtle way. Obviously, believe it is tonight, there is a big Oprah Winfrey event coming up with celebrities talking about politics. Will Harry and Meghan feature? Maybe, maybe not. We will be watching, though, to see if they do show up. Because, of course, Megan definitely wants to stay in the good graces of Oprah. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found it enjoyable. And I shall see you again very, very soon. Bye.